Hello, and thank you for joining us. This is No Sound Bites Allowed, and I am your host, Michael Voss, Dragon of the Southern Tier. I'm happy to be with you again today. I wish to speak to you about something that's very important. Our channel and myself have been champions of free speech, of the right to vote, and individual liberty, freedom, and choice. And that's something that we have been doing for 15 years. We're not about to stop. And we want to go over something that we had spoken about previously and continues to be an issue. And in particular, a case that has been decided by the New York State Department of Education that we have been involved with and has finally come to a decision. And we're going to share that with you. But before we get started with that, we want to address that if this is the first time that you are seeing the channel, we thank you and we welcome you to the channel. We want you to know that we do long-form political commentary. And every Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we do a live stream with you. Reaching out on Facebook, on Twitter, DLive, uh, YouTube, all the social media that the Internet overlords will allow us to, to receive your calls, your chats, your tweets from anywhere in the world to speak to us about what you think about the issues that affect us all. And we do mean anywhere in the world, because whether your government, whether the Internet overlords agree or not, we believe in your right to free speech. And we invite you to join us every Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to celebrate that right. And we hope that this Sunday we will see you with us. And we thank you for that. Now, I want to address what's going on with the issue at hand at this moment. And it's a big deal. You see, in our efforts to try and protect the public, to emphasize the very best in human nature and in the very best of what is freedom in America, we are advocates of voting. And I don't care who you vote for. It doesn't matter. You can vote for a Democrat, a Republican, a Libertarian, a conservative, uh, the Green Party, communism. I don't care. That's up to you. We believe in an informed society is the best society. Individuals that make up their own minds, not based on propaganda, 30 second commercials or various bullet point sound bites, but actual information and then voting. That's the best thing for everyone. Not everyone agrees with us on that. And in the course of doing that over the years, for over 15 years now, we have run into many situations where those who oppose free speech, those who oppose the com conversation, well, they're very active. In fact, you may recall, back in 2020, it was August 16th, when we were going out and we were making a statement. We believe in our local police department. We were standing by our local police department that has zero cases of police abuse ever since there were any um, the body cams were worn by our police officers. They have done an excellent job and something that should be lauded. And even as we saw progressives throughout the nation, the BLM, the progressive leaders of tomorrow, were going out and making protests, trying to defund the police and trying to remove the police which, as we know now, has resulted in increases in crime in every single city in the nation that has actually taken that path, we opposed it. And I spoke publicly about it. And I was attacked for it. Because they weren't really attacking this channel. They weren't really attacking me. They were attacking you. They wanted you to be silent. They didn't want you to react. We disagreed. It was back on April 20th of this year, we spoke out on a more local issue when we were speaking about our local school board and trying to make the point that our children in schools should not be taught racism. They should not be taught critical race theory that to be white is to be born a racist, to be black or Hispanic or Asian or anything else is to be born a victim. We didn't agree with that. We didn't agree with any of the coursework that would teach students those kind of lessons. We opposed that. We spoke 
publicly, we were publicly attacked by members of BLM, members of progressive leaders of tomorrow, otherwise known as PLOT, and the far left. They attacked us on this, and that's okay. We stood our ground. We were not afraid. We went on. On April 20th, there was an event held by BLM, and in that event, which was to celebrate the mass intoxication of the, of the public when New York State changed its ruling to allow marijuana to be a legalized drug. You may agree with that. You may disagree with that. We wanted to highlight this is what BLM, this is what progressive leaders of tomorrow, this is what Citizen Action was using that event to be able to do. And we highlighted that for you and we'll show you again. Uh, we don't have to live under their rules, up to whatever their status is, nationalism. We don't have to have our respectability bullshit. Stop that. We have three open seats, which means that we have an opportunity to run three community-backed candidates. And I am very, very, very pleased to say that we have one here with us today. presented this for a very specific reason. We wanted you to see this was from a live stream where we covered the entire event from beginning to end and every statement that was made in between. And very importantly, we want to highlight the fact that BLM, Progressive Leaders of Tomorrow, and Citizen Action did not want the public to think. They did not want the public to be able to make decisions for themselves. As you could see from the live stream, that was part of what they said. And they wanted people to vote in an election for a local school board based on not thought, not individual belief, but be doing what you were told to be a zombie, to be a non-human. And that's something we opposed. We opposed it very directly. And in fact, this also led to something else that we believe is very important because there was a corruption of our legal system that occurred. Individuals, as you could see from the event, as we showed in a live stream, these were individuals who were intoxicated. They were under the influence of a Schedule One drug, according to the DEA, a mind-altering substance. Now, whether or not you agree with that substance, marijuana, whether or not you believe you are affected as the DEA has documented, as has been medically documented, that's not important. Quite honestly, it's not important. The question is a, a matter of legal authority. Can you, in New York State, have someone who is intoxicated according to the law to sign a legal document to allow someone to vote in an election. This is considered a manipulation of the public. At least that is the way that we saw it. And we challenged this as soon as we possibly could, which took place on April 28th. On an April 28th, as we publicly published, we put forth a challenge because this has never been challenged before in New York State. No one has ever questioned whether or not it is legal 
to have someone to cause someone to be intoxicated or allow someone who is intoxicated to be able to sign a petition to affect elections in our nation at the local state or federal level it has never been a case and therefore it needs to be a case especially in new york state and we presented the information we believe that there is a, it's an important matter and so we detailed exactly why we were making this challenge and what we were seeking to do to be able to protect elections, the integrity of voters and elections at the local level as well as the national level. And we decided that this is a case that need to be needed to be heard and needed to have a decision. And so we put forth a challenge, a very detailed challenge. In fact, we put forth the challenge and then amended the challenge and continued the challenge. In fact, it went on on May 4th, where we continued to move this challenge forward, even though it was being denied, not on the merit of the challenge that we made, but because of technicalities. Because individuals did not want to address, can you cause someone to be intoxicated or to know that they are intoxicated, that they are not capable of making a decision and using that individual to promote a political position, to promote an election. This is a big subject. It has deep ramifications. It affects individuals' lives at a local level, state level, national level. This is important. Whether or not you agree with legal marijuana use is secondary. We know that being a legal marijuana user can impede your ability to have the Second Amendment, to have your rights. It can affect your life and your job. It also affects your elections and who gets to be on a ballot. And we wanted that determination, something that lawmakers did not consider when they passed this legislation. And we made a point of letting you know at every step, at every step what was going on. And we presented the information to the public over and over again as we brought this challenge higher and higher, not just through the local school board system, the Big Hampton Schools uh, Election Board, but onto the New York State Education Department. And we continue to make the updates, even uh, on May 4th, as we said, and we made sure to let the news media know at every step what we were doing and why. As you can see, as we reported here on May 4th with our letter that we had sent out to every local news media agency and many others throughout the nation to make them aware of what we were fighting for and why. Now you might imagine, at this point, someone was upset. Someone took offense. In fact, several people did. They happen to be members of the Progressive Leaders of Tomorrow, the same institution that had protested the Back to Blue, that attacked us for celebrating our First Amendment right, for expressing our opinion. That same organization, that same group of people decided that they wanted to attack us even more. How dare we go and challenge a candidate that they liked, a candidate that they put forth? How dare we make our opinion known? How dare we stand up for the rights of voters and the public? That was something they could not abide. And therefore, they decided to take action. And in fact, what we saw happen is that we, they went forward and decided to attack us. And I want to show you that moment. And they attacked us viciously, in person, on a personal level, to attack us, to try and silence you, to try and make sure that no one would follow this, to make sure that the labels were out there to try and silence our voice, and more importantly, yours, and to make sure that no protection to our elections would be possible. In fact, we spoke about this on May 12th, and we said this at the time. 
now called me a transphobe. That's right. They've called me a transphobe. They've called me a racist. They tell me that I'm uh, Uncle Tom. They're using all of these things because they want me to be silent, because they want me to be submissive, because they have no actual argument, because they have nothing but fear and intimidation that they can use and threats of physical violence. And they think that that will win their day and make everyone back down and do what they want. That won't work with me. That's never going to work with me. And we need to stand up against that as a community. That doesn't mean you have to become a Republican or a Libertarian or a conservative. You can be a Democrat. You can be a moderate Democrat. You can be a progressive or you can be a uh, any position. I don't care what you want to be. You can be any type of human being. That doesn't mean you have to agree, but it also doesn't mean that you get to instill fear into others. You don't get to instill fear into other human beings. You don't get to try and deny their rights or their opinions. You don't get to be violent, but that's not the way that BLM sees this. That's not the way that they want to project this message. In fact, they want to project an entirely different message. They want to label individuals such as a transphobe, as a racist, an Uncle Tom. They use all of these terms and they will go out onto social media to attack you, not in their own name, but in made up names in fake identities so that they can slander individuals anonymously, just as we showed you here. Again, I will show you exactly what they are saying because they are seeking to try and make you afraid. I am not afraid. What do they say? I'm sharing these documents with permission. They are public documents. They are available to everyone in the public. It is a public document. Every challenge is just as petitions are. There is no need for permission. Some local transphobes. Okay, so instantly they have gone to the point of labeling someone that they do not know and they have no reason to understand anything about this person. And they're saying that they are a local transphobe. How do you know that? You don't know me. You know nothing about me. You know nothing about my life. But you're using a label because you're trying to use emotions to scare people, either into being silent or to be able to get people to be emotionally upset, to say, oh my God, this is such an evil person. Oh, and here we go. And here come the people right now. I want you to see this, folks. So the first comment is from Amir Zan Zakan Stern. You're absolutely disgusting, absolutely disgusting to be this cruel. I am not targeting anyone on their race, their gender, their sexual preference, their body type, their color of skin, their religion. Please show me the proof where I have done that, Amira. I'm not telling you that you can't have your opinions. I'm asking you a very simple question. Show me the proof why I have done that. I have the legal documents. I will be able, to, I will be happy to provide them to you. They are public documents. There is not a single statement in there about anyone's sexuality, their gender, their anything. I am talking about the actions of an individual seeking an election that used other individuals who are under the influence of drugs, a sub, uh, schedule one drug, which is a mind altering substance according to the DEA. Please tell me what's disgusting about that. And in fact, there is nothing disgusting about that. There is nothing wrong with that. We are defending the public and we are happy to have done so. We have been happy to take on the slings and blades. And it was really, really bad because after that event, after we were attacked on social media, where we were labeled incorrectly as a transphobe, as we were labeled a racist, as we were labeled some of the most in, insulting things that you have heard, we have been labeled and accused and stated things that only racists seem to be able to say, except if they happen to be a member of progressive leaders of tomorrow. Unless they happen to be members of the far left, then it's somehow possible to call a black Hispanic the very worst of words, the very worst of terms. And that's okay, according to left, because somehow I stopped being black or Hispanic. I stopped being a human being. And instead, they can use whatever label they wish. It was a troubling 
time. And the news media, for their part, decided to do nothing about that. That's right. On May 18th, as the challenge was going through, as it was sitting before the desk of the New York uh, State Education Department, the news media said nothing. They told the public nothing because the news media had been scared away. They were terrified of the idea of someone of a protected group being on an election and having violated the rights of individuals. They didn't want to touch that with a 10 foot pole. They were afraid of that. We were not. And our challenge went through. We made the challenge. We made the appeals. We asked for a decision from New York State that will affect every election in New York State. This will affect people's lives. And we wanted to make sure that we followed through. And we took the slings and the arrows and the accusations, the labeling, the insults, the racial slurs from the far left to be able to do it because no one else would. And the news media would not cover it. And we went all the way to the very end. Now, the reason why we're making this video today is because we did get a response. We finally got an answer. Today is September 23rd. We made our challenge initially on April 28th. We followed that up in May. It is September 23rd, and we've finally gotten an answer from New York State. Now, before I go into that answer, I want to be very clear. The candidate in question lost their race. They are not part of the local school board. But the issue that is the question at hand, the biggest part of the problem is, can you use an American citizen and make them and allow them to be intoxicated to knowingly use and take advantage of an American citizen for the benefit of a candidate in an election. That question has not been answered, regardless of whether someone voted for or against the candidate in the school board election, because it doesn't matter. And if you notice, I don't care what their race, color, creed, gender, religion, None of that matters. It is immaterial. It is unimportant. What is important? Are you, are you being used by individuals to take advantage of you to win a political race? That's the only question that matters. And that's the only question that New York State refused to answer. In the response that we received, from the State Education Department in New York. We have presented this to the commissioner. We do not have a legal a law firm to stand for this. We did this ourselves as citizens. And we took this on, and we took on the law firm, the school board, plot progressive leaders of tomorrow, and the far left, because it was the right thing to do. And as you can see from the answer from the New York State Education Department, we had made the claim, as it states, in part, as to whether, quote, solicited petition signatures are valid if an individual is unable to provide consent due to intoxication from mind-altering psychoactive drugs. That's the key and most important question. A question that has never been answered in New York State. And the answer from the State Department of Education for New York is the appeal is dismissed as moot. They refused to answer the question. The election is over. The candidate lost. It doesn't matter to New York State anymore. They will not give a ruling on this. They don't care about whether or not the public is being used. Whether in the future, progressive leaders of tomorrow, BLM, Antifa, um, Citizen Action, the far left, they don't care if they use you, that they get you intoxicated and use you in that altered state of mind to advance their political agenda. New York State, by its statements, 
on the 20th day of September of 2021 says it doesn't care. It won't answer the question. It's not important. You can think many things about this if you wish. Again, we're not telling you whether or not you should or should not imbibe a legal sub or a substance that is now considered legal in New York State, which remains a DEA Schedule One psychoactive drug. That's your choice. We're not telling you what party to vote for or what candidate to vote for in any election. If you wish to vote for a conservative, a libertarian, a Democrat, a progressive, a, a Republican, it doesn't matter. That's your choice. As long as you are informed, we wouldn't question that ever. As long as you have a reason for that vote, go ahead and make it. We encourage you to make a, a vote in any and all elections for whomever you think is the best candidate. We have never not said that. And we don't care what the candidate is. We don't care their gender, their religion, their race, color of skin, their ethnicity. If they're a legal candidate, then they should run. And you should vote either for them or against them based on your reasoning. Not because some party told you to do that. Not because some political organization told you to do that. Not because you are afraid that someone is going to turn around and label you as an ist, a phobe, or some other uh, social outcast. Those aren't reasons. New York State had the opportunity to stand up for you as a voter. They had the opportunity, and we believe the obligation, to make clear that you are protected, that political organizations and political parties cannot use you to advance their agenda and their power. New York State seems to disagree with us. New York State decided to bow out and not make a determination. That is a problem for you. That is something that takes away from your rights. As it stands today, in every election going forward, New York State, on this basis of this decision, it is possible for political organizations and corrupt candidates, in our opinion, to go out and to use intoxication, mind-altering substances, to get you to do their bidding. We disagree with that. I don't care if that's a Republican uh, or a Democrat or a Libertarian or anyone else that uses such tactics. We oppose it. I personally oppose it. This channel opposes that. It's not about politics. It's about freedom and respecting individuals and their rights. Perhaps that means that you think that we are a racist, an ist or a phobe. Um, some kind of race traitor or some other derogatory term, some kind of social outcast because we want to protect your rights and your freedoms. That's your right to believe that and we are happy to hear those comments. But we will say that as we have been doing for 15 years, we will stand up for your right to vote. We will stand up for your right to be informed and we will stand up for your right to not be intoxicated, to be used as nothing more than meat to advance a political agenda, whether that be from a party or a political organization, regardless of which party or political organization they may represent. We will continue our fight for you. That is what this channel does. That is what I personally do. We hope you respect that. But either way, we will not stop. I want to thank you, and we look forward to seeing you again, and we hope that you will join us every Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to be able to share your thoughts on these matters that affect us all. We thank you, and we hope that you have a very good day.